Mama, and I can't pay my bills yet. I'm lying on the sofa, and nothing feels real here. Yeah. Just put me in that coma. Wake me. I think it's only one of those things you can have in perspective where after the fact, you know, I think uh, being bullied is really difficult. And uh, it's not always, it's still hard for me to talk about, funny enough, but I'll talk about anything anyway, you know? So if I cry while talking about it, that's fine. But it, it is easier. It is easier because you have one thing that's annoying and it's school and it's about three, four or five kids maybe that are annoying and that are difficult. But later you have so much shit and so much responsibilities and so much things you gotta work through that aren't necessarily even tied to people. So you can't even hate a thing, you know? Uh, you hate the industry, baby, or you hate that people aren't, you don't have a specific like, fuck Steve, you know what I mean? I wanna take that sort of hate and just, you know, fuck, fuck that guy, but you can't. And that's, it's, I haven't really thought about it until now. So that's a good question. Uh, the track itself, it, it starts really just from school and then it just gets into, everything that's like worse down the line. And I think at some point, I think I twist it at the end and then I make it sound probably a bit more uplifting, I like to go more in, in depth with the track. Or I just say that everything's shit, I can't remember. Well, that's the great thing about being an artist is you can choose, right? And you can make decisions and uh, having that creative freedom is important. And I, a lot of people, like I work very, closely with production uh, so for the same reason that I can comment and say I think we should do this this differently is because I also produce a lot of my own songs anyway uh, so being able to juggle that isn't as difficult when you know what you're talking about and producers as people are really nice usually very calm very down to earth and they are really go with the flow and artists are, or rappers singers songwriters are usually more high high strung maintenance and they're thinking about the story you know so yeah of course i'll be thinking about the story while while making the beat but while making the beat i think i'm only looking for a hook i don't write my verses until i have my chorus if the chorus is there yeah i'll write my verses because you could write a thousand different verses but if the hook isn't there then the song isn't going to be good you know so whenever i'm working with people or if i'm producing myself i will do make sure that hey i got my chorus production wise and then I have my hook. So I have my top line and I have my melody. I have my lyrics. It's like, okay, this is where the concept is. So the concept's always gonna be in the chorus. And then the verses need to somehow start, finish somewhat, you know, leave you high strung somehow for your first chorus or, you know, depending on your structure. And the second verse uh, is where you're supposed to try and wrap up a story in a weird way. And it's not always easy, but it is fun. Yeah, but that's also one of the reasons why I have you know, thousands, thousands of notes in my phone. And this time, the relevance of that song is more apparent than when I wrote it. <laughs> I think I wrote it in in last year, last year sometime. Uh, or no, at the what what year is it? Twenty twenty two. I wrote it in the beginning of the year, but it only released like uh, two months ago or something. But yeah, it's only really going downhill. I think I wrote it before the war broke out. Yeah. And then things have just been... Yeah, man. Have you seen the price of gas? You know what I mean? Shit's nuts. Yeah. And then I don't think... And then the chorus... Uh, Mama, I can't... I'm, I'm not gonna try and sing it right now because my voice is completely ruined. Mama, I can't pay my bills yet. I'm lying on the sofa and nothing feels real. Yeah, just put me in that coma. Wake me up when I'm rich. Yeah, mama, how come no one gets told growing up's getting old? You know, so that's just a direct conversation with my mother in that case, being like, hey, I haven't even had that conversation with her, I don't think, but I think a lot of people have, you know, trying to talk to your parents and they want you to succeed and they want you to be financially stable. And my parents have been very supportive about choosing music as a profession. Uh, which is not the most financially lucrative thing to do for the most part or for a long time at least. And then it has that nice flip at the end, you know? 
in uh, three years' time when you're making bank. But till then, it's you know, fake rings and fake chains. Till then. Yeah. But in that situation, is not fun to be in when you have to talk to your parents and ask for financial help because I think everybody's sort of been there. So, uh, yeah, it's a fucking struggle. And the backpack I had had Pokemon cards. Which, by the way, Pika sneaks. You know what I'm saying? Pika shoes. In the backpack I had had Pokemon cards. Jeans that I wore, they were baggy with stars. Dreams that I dreamed came straight from the heart. I can't remember the last time I had one. Had one belt with the Tamagotchi clip in. Do you remember Tamagotchi? Kool-Aid on the way to an unfinished basement. All around Canada. It was all like new, newly made. That's where I'm from. It's newly made houses. None of them had fucking finished basements. It was crazy if you had a finished basement. Where a couple good friends played Beyblade, thinking if I moved at 12, it could be fun. You know? Like you were, that was a good time. Growing up in Canada till I was 12 was a great time. Moving to Sweden, that's when I started getting bullied and then you had to grow up a bit faster. Canada was tight. Yeah, it was really nice. Very multicultural. We had like 60, 60 languages in the school. So everyone was really different and that was really nice. And the only reason I'm saying that because when I went to Sweden, everyone was really Swedish. Everyone was white. And all of a sudden I had an accent, you know? So I was a white immigrant, which was really strange. And then that's a weird thing to sort of walk on because Swedish is my heritage too. So I was moving to where my heritage is from, but still being an outsider with an accent. It's really weird, but it's also one of the reasons you get bullied, you know, if you're just a bit different. And that's why I think there was very little bullying where I was originally from, because everyone was different. Dumb little kid with a pocket of dreams, a wallet full of lint, but a wallet with seams. Like it still works. Yeah. Even crops got to start with some water and, and seeds. And if you grow, you fought for the cream. That's that cream of the crop expression, right? Thought I'd be free, so free when I'm old and I'm grown. I didn't really think that I'd still be broke, you know? Selling my old clothes just to get some cash, to pay my rent, or wipe my ass. And then I don't say ass, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's no uplifting ending to this story. You know what? Now, in hindsight, the ending of the first verse would probably fit better than, you know, than the ending of the second verse. But the only thing uplifting is a joke, I guess, at the end, which I kind of enjoyed. And then it just does another chorus where uh, you're complaining about your mom. But the whole, or not complaining about your mom, but the complaining about your book. But the whole thing is that it's actually upbeat and it's fun. People are going to be dancing to this fucking song. I have no idea what the hell I'm saying, but there's gonna be four or five people out of every 100, maybe, that are gonna write and be like, yo, that's, I feel you. Yeah, I, I know exactly that feeling.